Okay, ready? Hey everybody on YouTube, I hope everyone's doing well. God bless you. Um, guys, uh, looks like the hive is getting stirred up. I wanted to get out back in front of everybody and make a video. Um, I'm sorry I've been absent for a bit, but we had such an influx of envelopes and other things that were on my plate, it was just impossible to get the videos. By the way, we have the new Before the Fire um, DVD that's available with the Destruction of America on one disc. And um, y'all, if you want it, it's free. Just send a self-addressed stamped envelope. And uh, if you want to support the project, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. But um, anyway, what I want to talk about is what's going on right now. And uh, just from the perspective that the Lord's allowed me to see, and I want to share it with you, the news, the news, the news, and how, how the news is just this never-ending cycle of fear. You know, that it's all these things are coming, all of this, and he'll, Clay will edit into this video all these things that everybody could be, li be living in fear of. Well, we're not supposed to be living in fear. If you truly trust Jesus Christ with your whole life and, you know, your soul, you trust Him with your soul, you shouldn't live in fear because perfect love expels all fear, correct? That's what, that's what the Word of God says. So, um, after you read all this news that's going on and you process it and then you think about the reality that there's a hive mindset. There's an article that came out yesterday in news.com and it says scientists have figured out that we were genetically engineered by aliens. Okay, now see, now here's what's so funny. Everybody's going to buy that mainstream, right? But it was in 2008 or something that the Just a Messenger series was done, that the Lord gave me the information on the Just a Messenger series and put it in a video before Obama was elected president. And in that video, I broke down a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and it shows aliens co-mingling and having sex with human females, producing a hybrid race. Well, guess what? That's exactly what the Bible says. The Bible says when the sons of God, that's Satan and the fallen angels, had intercourse with human women, they gave birth to the Nephilim. Nephal means fallen, Eve means one. When this deception that's coming comes, mainstream will believe it because it, what, now all of a sudden scientists are saying we were genetically engineered and they, they can prove it? Well, they're right in a way, but they're not 100% right. We were, we started in the Garden of Eden, but then Eve was beguiled, seduced by the serpent. And that began the fall of man. Okay, the Bible's right on the money. Daniel 2.43, the miry clay, which is the human race, mixed with the iron, which is them, the, the fallen. The miry clay mixed with iron, it says they will mingle, them, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. It said they shall not cleave to one another. Picture the cross of Jesus Christ right after I say that. They will be mingled together, but they shall not cleave to one another. So take the guy, one guy and put him on one side of the cross and the other guy on the other side of the cross. And in the middle, you got Jesus Christ reaching out to both halves to make both halves one. That's exactly what the Bible says too. To, you know, a lot of people say that's your interpretation. No, that's the Holy Spirit. Um, he came to, uh, it's Ephesians 2, he came to make peace between the two halves, between the two men, reconciling both the God and one body through, through the cross, destroying the enmity, destroying the enmity, reconciling both the God. Um, his purpose was to create one new man in Christ. I'm just going off the top of my head. But the, re the reality is there's scripture that supports every single thing that I'm, I've been trying to show you guys. So now... Now we have the star, we are star people. Scientific proof we were created by aliens. Well, there, you know what? Here it comes. The hive's been stirred up with fear. Now that the whole hive, and Clay will give you the details of that article. It's amazing. The, um, the hive's been stirred up, and now there's big problems on the whole planet. Everybody, the whole hive is in fear, and they're looking for some way out. That's going to be it. And then, you know, there you go. The, the stage has been set, guys. The stage is completely set. Um, I don't know if this has come 100% accurate, but, um, you know, out there running around the Internet, it says, you know, we're at DEFCON 3. If you go to Wikipedia and look it up, you know, it's a descending scale, I think, from DEFCON uh, 1, 2, 3, 
um, four and five. Uh, Wikipedia has it. So, you know, things are getting very close. So I think it's time to make Jesus Christ the Lord of all. Because, you know, have you ever heard the saying, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. So time's coming close, guys. Time's bearing down on us. Get ready. Prepare your hearts. So here's the article that we're talking about. Uh, this was news.com.au. Also, Discovery News. Uh, I'll put the links up, and I'll just go through a little bit. I mean, this this concept is what you know. I personally believe will be Second Thessalonians 2:11. What Johnny was saying, the deception is that people, you know, they want to believe science so much because it disproves God, and if there's no God, then there's no moral ramifications, you know, for our actions. There's there's no uh, there's no sin. There's no judgment. There there's it's just whatever feels good is good, you know, kind of Oprah theology. And so this will, people will try really hard to believe stuff like this. Take it to the next level. Okay, let's say that aliens did seed life. With that logic, who created the aliens? I mean, where does it start? Where does it end? It starts with God. There's no way around it. There's absolutely no way around it. You can't escape the fact that God has his fingerprint on, on every piece of creation that he's made. There's just no way. I mean, just look at look at how a giraffe has to drink water and tell me how that evolved naturally. It, the system has to be in place. I'm going to put this small clip from Chuck Misler on how, uh, how giraffes have, what, what has to take place biologically, physiologically for them to actually stoop down and drink water. Their heart, their brain, their blood flow, everything. It is a dynamic, mechanical system that is so fine-tuned that it can't develop separately. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? I, I think it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe that there is a, a loving God. This is the researchers and this is the discovery.com report. They call it biological SETI and the researchers claim that the mathematical code in human DNA cannot be explained by evolution. So they're saying there's this stamp of intelligent design that is it's far surpassing any kind of you know, chance happening or, or, or chance sequencing, that it's, it's structured and it's logical. Um, they go on to say that the, the research has led the scientists to conclude that we were invented outside the solar system already several billion years ago. So this is where the lie comes in because it, it does support that there is intelligent design, but they're automatically going the alien route. It's also hinting at this hive mind concept that Jonathan talks about where there's this code that's hidden in the DNA that can be activated. It's like a secret message that we're carrying in our DNA. And now think about Revelation where everyone worships the image of the beast. It's going to be like a switch gets flipped and, and everyone's going to just believe, oh yes, they created us, I can feel it in me. Or It's going to be a really strong deception and that's why we have to continue to blow the horn, you know, until it's time to go because people that are left behind, this is going to be the most valuable information is going to be soul saving is going to be whether you take this mark of the beast and you believe this alien lie or you believe that god created us and that the aliens the fallen angels they just tampered with the creation like it says in genesis 6 4 they came down and they made it with human women i mean there you go so here's the other article i'll put both of these links in the description box it says is an alien message embedded in our genetic code and this was on april 1st and this was discoverynews.com it says there are simple arrangements of the code revealing an ensemble of arithmetical and ideographical patterns of symbolic language. Here's the little sneaky part. They're going to start discrediting the Bible with this information. Can the claim of an alien signature in our genetic code be any more believable or provable than biblical ID, which is intelligent design? This guy's an interesting character. He can go without water for months at a time, interestingly enough. And of course, in some of his habitats, he has to. But there's some strange things about a giraffe. Being so tall, it takes quite a bit of blood pressure to get up to, to get the blood to his brain. The giraffe's aorta has about 220 millimeters of mercury pressure when he's normally standing. This pressure would be dangerously high in a human. But in a giraffe, it's necessary to get the blood up to, up his long neck to his brain. But he's got a problem. When he, when he bends down to drink water, he's got two problems, at least. One is that's when he's vulnerable. That's when you would expect a lion to leap out of the underbrush that's been waiting for the opportunity to take it. The other problem he has 
is that the pressure would normally be enough to burst the blood vessels in his brain because it's designed to be 18 feet in the air it's now at water level and it would he would have a what would a diver would call embolism right well so what what's the answer here well it turns out there are valves in the artery going up to his his uh, head that are that adjust when he goes down those valves close the blood between the last valve and the brain goes into a sponge, it, it's diverted around the brain into a sponge-like group of vessels underneath the brain that, um, uh, uh, that's called the retim whatever that means, it's, a, it's a, uh, an organ specifically designed to absorb that pressure and to act as a, a reservoir. As he raises his, when, he, when he's down there drinking, if he was to suddenly raise his head Without, he wouldn't have, he, he'd have just the opposite problem, he'd have no blood in his brain and he'd have a dizzy spell, he'd pass out, whatever. But because the, this sponge-like reservoir is there to feed oxygenated, uh, oxygenated blood to his brain when, as he comes up, the veins coming down from his head also have valves that are designed to equalize the pressure. So as, he, as his head goes from 18 feet in the ground into the water, it's sealed off. But as he comes up, the, there's a reservoir underneath the brain in the sponge-like organ, and uh, it's all. But the point is, it's all been designed in anticipation of his lifestyle. Now, what makes this particularly useful as an example? I want you to imagine how this evolved, because the deficiencies in his design are fatal. And you got to remember one thing about. Evolution. Dead animals don't evolve. Okay. So if he has a blood hemorrhage and dies, there's no way to pass on that experience, however you want to fanciful, you know, fancifully imagine it, to his offspring. Whether it's because he, he brought it, you know, because he brought his head down, had an embolism, or because not somehow having that equalized, maybe getting his head up, he would pass out when the lion's about to eat him. So, and if the lion eats him, of course, that leaves a very, very difficult fossil for. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay. What's interesting is you can find hundreds of examples where there is an essential design element, either in their skeleton or their circulation system or whatever, that is essential for their survival. And trying to conjure up out of one's imagination an evolutionary hypothesis of how it got there is an errand, it's a fool's errand. Because the defects, especially in their interim phases, are deficient and he dies. And, uh, and the survival of the fittest motif makes sure that the interim stages are gone. You follow me? So, and the, 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 anyway, the vein, so you got, you got special design of the heart, special design of the arteries going up, special design of the special sponge-like organism underneath the brain, and a special design of the veins coming down. Very, very skillful design.